guys um this is a short video about um fermat's little theorem for um for elementary number theory so um let's do a quick example let's look at um the units mod 7 so that would be u7 so um, these are congruence classes mod 7 which are invertible okay. and that turns out to be all the congruence classes represented by integers which are co-prime to 7 so I'll write them all down here's u7 okay and there's six of them and so Fermat's little theorem says that since there's six of them, if you raise each to the power six, you get one mod seven. Okay, so what the theorem says is that uh, for, for when for the for the prime seven, it says one to the sixth is congruent to one mod seven. Or in other words, the congruence class of one to the power six is just the congruence class of one. But also, 2 to the 6 is congruent to 1 mod 7. 3 to the 6 is congruent to 1 mod 7. 4 to the 6 is congruent to 1 mod 7. And 5 to the 6 is congruent to 1 mod 7. Okay. And of course, um, 6 to the 6 is congruent to 1 mod 7. Okay. So let's just uh, work a few out to convince ourselves that this might be true. For example, okay, and you know, the same is true of the congruence classes, so, but we didn't send right, like, congruence class of two to the power of six is one, congruence class of three to the sixth is one, and so on, okay? For example, for six, well, let's, let's, let's work out this, see if this is true. Well, if we take 6 to the 6, well, mod 7, 6 is really negative 1. Okay, so this is negative 1 to the 6, mod 7. Okay, but as an integer, negative 1 to the 6 is just 1. So this is 1, so it's congruent to 1. Okay. Now if you work out, um, that tells you that if you compute 6 to the power of 6, subtract 1, the number you get is divisible by 7. So another way to state this is that or 7 divides 6 to the 6 minus 1. Okay. Uh, let's try, you know, 3 to the 6th. This as an example. 3 to the 6th, well, that's, um, 3 squared cubed, well, that's just 9 cubed on 7, but 9 is really congruent to 2. And 2 cubed is 8, which is just 1 mod 7. Okay, and uh, if you find that a bit tricky, maybe try something like, what about uh, mod 11? Like try um, four to the 10th. Let's try that. Well, that's just 16. So it's 4 squared to the 5th power, that's 16 to the 5th power. That's really 5 to the 5th power. Okay. Um, now 5 to the 5th power, what can we do there? 
Well, we can write it as um, 25 squared times 5. This is all mod 11. Right? And 16 is congruent to 5, so 16 to the 5th is congruent to 5 to the 5th. And now I've written 5 to the 5th as 5 squared squared times 5. And 25 is really, so if you take off power uh, multiple of 11, you get 3. So this is really 3 squared times 5. Again, this is mod 11. Okay. Um, now 3 squared is 9 times 5 is 45 and again you see 45 take off four 11s you get one okay and I hope those little uh, little exercises and you can try more you know just to get familiar but I hope they kind of um, make this uh, like modular arithmetic a little bit more familiar. Now let me state uh, the theorem which sits behind all these calculations called Fermat's Little Theorem. It just says, let's take an integer a and p a prime number. Then a to the p is congruent to a mod p. In particular, oops, in particular, if the GCD of A and P is 1, then A to the P minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod P. Okay. Now, um, there's kind of two ways to prove this. One way is, I'll just say use group theory, okay, um, or abstract algebra. Okay, uh, I want to kind of keep like as much of these prerequisites as I can away from this course. So, uh, but if you, if you know, if you take abstract algebra, you'll see that. Um, that this can be used to prove this. This is like Fermat's little theorem is a special case of a more general theorem. Okay, but let's just try and do a, a little trick. Okay, this is our, our method. Okay, first note that if P divides A, here's equation one, if P divides A, then this equation is true. And notice 0 to the p is congruent to 0 mod p. Okay, so we're done. So we, we may assume that p does not divide a. In other words, since p is a prime number that doesn't divide a, we may, that means that the GCD of p and a is 1. Okay. Okay, now let's consider two sequences of integers. One sequence is just going to be the consecutive integers from 1 to p minus 1. And the next sequence is I'm just going to take this sequence and multiply it by a. Oops, this is not three. This is so wrong. I meant p minus one times a. 
Okay. Okay, and notice that um, in the first row, we have a complete set of representatives for UP. Okay. In other words, every congruence class that is invertible mod P is represented by one and only one of these integers. And our the claim we want to claim that this second row is also um, a complete set of representatives for U UP. Okay, so let me say over here what I mean by representatives for UP. Um, every element of UP is represented by exactly one A, oops, not A, um, A is our variable name, so let me just try and change this. So let's say every alpha is represented by exactly one uh, alpha with okay. and this is not too hard to see because um, if 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 I have a congruence class mod P which is not divisible by P or which is represented by something co-prime to P, I may divide it by P and take the remainder, and the remainder lies in this range. Okay, but the, the our claim is that the second row is also a, rep a complete set of representatives for UP, so it has the same property. And to show this, um, <coughs> notice that um, these are all, none of these are divisible by P. Okay, so let's, let's consider this sequence. Okay, so P does not divide A, 2A, 3A, all the way up to P minus 1A, because P doesn't divide A and P doesn't divide 1 up to P minus 1. Okay. Furthermore, not only that, but if I look at the difference of any two, um, two distinct elements, the difference will not be divisible by P. If I look at IA minus JA, well that's just I minus J times A. This is not divisible by P. Um, if we take i, i and j to be in this range, and uh, let's say j is less than i. Because the difference between i minus j will also be in this range, and it'll be, it'll be bigger than or equal to 1, and less than or equal to, well, not even p minus 1, it could be at most p minus 2. Okay, so i minus j times a is not divisible by p. In other words, um, these differences are not congruent. Okay, so, so what this tells us is that the congruence classes a, 2a, up to p minus 1a are all distinct. Okay, but there's only this many congruence classes in UP. Okay, so therefore, UP is this as well. We can write it like this. Okay. 
Okay, and we saw before another way to write UP is like this. Okay. And now we have uh, two different ways of describing a set. So that gives me a way to um, describe a number in two different ways. And I'm going to look at, I'm going to take, I'm going to multiply all the elements of, of UP together. So let's call that S. That's um, the product 1 times 2 times P minus 1. Okay. But this is also a way to describe UP. So if I multiply all the elements of UP, I get the product of all these. So this is S as well. So these are the same congruence class in UP. In other words, we have that um, P minus 1 factorial is congruent to A times 2A, the P minus 1 times A mod P. Okay. And now notice that um, we, we have a uh, a lot of common terms on both sides. We have a 1 on both sides, a 2 on both sides, a 3 on both sides, all the way up to p minus 1. All those are co-prime to p, so we can cancel them all. Okay. We can cancel. So um, on the right-hand side, it's really a to the p minus 1 times p minus 1 factorial. Okay. And p minus 1 factorial, its GCD with p is, is, is 1, right? Okay. And that tells us that by cancellation, we cancel on both sides. We get a to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. Multiply both sides by a, you get a to the p is congruent to a mod p. Okay. Um, okay, that that completes the proof of Fermat's little theorem, and also it uh, finishes off this video. Uh, thanks for watching.